Welcome back, it is part whatever of this Hulubu campaign, I've lost count of the number of episodes. However, uh, to get straight to the point, we are resuming from where the last episode left off, where I marched my unit straight into Yong'an, and it was catastrophic. We won a first initial battle, and I thought, yep, this will be easy. We'll just sweep through the city. We've got these brand new tactics, uh, Sura Formation, that have been taught to our officers. We'll just walk up to Yong'an and we will destroy the occupants of the city. Cho Yu, who is in charge of the city, decided to deploy and more or less eliminated my, my attacking force. This is a bit of a problem as I did deploy about 50,000 troops. And if we have a quick look, that is about a seventh of my total population, not accounting for the losses. And if we look at the southwest, there are not many troops in reserve to reinforce. However, there are some troops in Hangzhou, which I could allocate towards what is this, um, Jiangzhou. That will take quite a lot of time as we are marching through mountains, through convoluted paths this is the, still the difficulty in fighting in the Xu region supply lines are an absolute nightmare and of course we do have Cao Cao in Shangyong so if I empty out Hanzhong Cao Cao will decide this is an opportunity to attack but before I get into it I want to say I completely forgot to mention something very 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 important in the last two episodes and that is I decided to give the AI a helping hand so if we have a quick look at my save files um, here we are you'll notice it says achievements unavailable uh, achievements unattainable underneath the picture of the map the reason being, I haven't allocated any changes to the gold or resources, however what I have done is, sorry for the pop up there, uh, if I have a quick look at Sun Jian's force there, I've given him a little bit of helping hand in terms of his diplomacy. I've granted Sun Jian a free alliance with Cao Cao and Liu Bei. The way I've justified this is I've for, you know, Sun Jian is in dire straits, he is the bulwark against the Han court forces at Alubu, and I figured if this was you know, taken from the novel or even the history, Sun Jian would potentially try, try to ally himself with uh, Cao Cao and Liu Bei, who are at war with each other, simultaneously at war with me. They will spread thin, Sun Jian would think, you know, I am no threat to the North, the North has no means of attacking myself, let's make a diplomatic arrangement so that I can concentrate on fighting off the biggest threat on the map, which is Ubu. And I think that might help Sun Jian concentrate his forces against us, once again, sorry for the pop-up. Uh, so, no, it, it is um, it is cheating in a sense, but it's cheating in the AI's favour, so I hope you can look past this and I hope it doesn't ruin your enjoyment of the scenario. I did consider giving Sun Jian more troops, but I, you know, that's a bit beyond what I can justify doing. I think that does sort of ruin, ruin it a little bit. I will consider that in another campaign, however, seeing if I can uh, play against an AI faction that I max out their troop count for. But either way, that's where we are now. So, the immediate uh, immediate moves are get these guys out of the range of Yong An, move troops south, and we're going to move um, substantial amounts of troops south at that. I think I'm okay for supplies, at least I hope so. Mm. 100 days, I could... Hmm. If I do this, am I going to spend a lot of... Oh, regardless, that's what we're going to have to do. We're just going to take the hit, 100 days. That is when our supplies will arrive, so that is also assuming the AI is going to accurately predict how long that will take, and they may not do so. So I am going to effectively pause and then resume in about probably four months' time unless something happens in between once our troops have arrived and we will launch our second attack against the weakened Yong'an. 
that is, if I can remember how to pause, which I can do now. Chang Liao has escaped and acting as vanguard he's allowed Dao Chan and Yan Shi to also escape. So he's protected his wife and Lu Bu's wife. Not at the cost of his own life, which is nice. Well, that's a massive shame, but I don't think this could have been delayed for too much longer. I suspect in the last episode where I changed over the life expectancy item that that was a mistake as immediately afterwards I got a warning saying Luchi was on his way out. This is the end of an era, it is the year 203 and one of our principal officers, Luji, has died and with him unfortunately, well there goes a lot of the uh, Dong Zhuo era officers, but unfortunately with Luji, our trinity of Zhu Huang, Wu Ji, and Zhu Jun has now, well, it's weakened substantially. So I am going to retract, in quite a callous act, the life extension item from Zhu Jun, so Zhu Jun can die, and I, in the process, can allocate some new sworn siblings for Zhu Huang. Which <laughs> feels really, really bad, but I can't really leave Zhu Huang as one of my better officers without three, well, two brothers to assist him, as Zhu Jun and Zhu Huang simply won't last without a third uh, sworn sibling, and I can't add an additional one on now that Lu Ji has died. I don't know if you can actually give an officer two new sworn siblings when the original two have died, but we'll soon find out. As I moved some troops out of Hanjong, Cao Cao was deciding to attack, but I don't think really he's fought this through that well. So I could handle this in one of two directions, using the Chiang is a bit boring, I suppose. So I could use Wei Yan, Fen Cheng, Shen Yu, Sima Yi. Okay, actually, have I got a better option there? Wu Ban, Wu Lan, are you linked? No. Okay, have I got any officers with any synergy at all? Nope. This is a very poorly thought, planned out city. Okay, anyway, so Wei Yan, Fan Cheng, and Sima Yi, and Shen Yu can go together. Have you got Goose? No, you don't. Oh well, I should know that from my last campaign. No female officers here? No, I suppose not. I could have sworn I had a supportive officer with the second army, but maybe I didn't move them around. Anyway, these will do. He's not got any sworn brothers, so maybe these are replacement candidates for Hu Shong once Hu Jen dies. So, snake or fish? Snake is only t a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction better than fish in mountain terrain without the mountain or warlord trait but I have the policy for fish I don't have the policy for snake so I'll that's what I'll do so these yeah these three will be able to form a defense no problem at all about that no one's reckless two in the front line two in the back Wei Yan and Sima Yi are two very capable officers in fact what they'll likely want to go for our um, our area, our core, and Yang. So why don't we meet them there? Both Fa Cheng and Sima Yi have vantage ground. Chen Yu has the trait that lowers enemy assault, I think, or enemy defense. So this will be more than enough. And then I do have the Chiang officers in reserve if I need to send reinforcements over. And just so you can see. In regards to specialties, where are you, Zhu Jun? This isn't going to go well. In fact, I'm going to give this to Gao Xun because he's going to be running out of life expectancy yeah, soon. So Zhu Jun, that hurt his loyalty a lot, but he hasn't got long left to live after I've taken this item away anyway. Well, look at that. Talking about... Uh, an end of an era, we have Sun Jian dying in the year 203, so that is well, obviously where Sun, Sun Jian can last to if he doesn't die historically as by events. So, 
I will um, I will frame that in a way that Sun Jian set up diplomacy with Cao Cao and Liu Bei, allowing the later generation to hopefully stand a chance against the menace that is Liu Bu. I think that adds a little bit of a flair to it, which um, is very sad. But we are two o three now. We are only five years away from Zhuge Liang spawning. The next generation of Jing province officers and scholars, Zhuge Liang, Zhu Zhan, not Zhu Zhan, then Zhu Xu and the like, they're not on the map yet, Bang Tong, but they will. Oh, Wu Jun's here, which is nice. <laughs> he is Yuan Shu strategist, or fancy that. That's not something you see every game. But either way, uh, Zhu Xu and the like will be kind of spawning soon. I might even be able to take Jing province before they spawn and they can they can replace the officers that will be losing to old age. And in uh, one turn, as you can see here, our next attack on Yang An will be ready. Okay, I've deployed the Ubu army to the south, which we'll take a look at in a second, and this isn't really going to be that scary a battle. Got good old Wei Yan there. Even without any confidants, he's doing quite well because of his annihilator traits, so we'll just... Um, Let's wait and see how how quickly we can annihilate these rather weak units. This is the power of fighting in terrain that favours yourself due to the neighbouring cause, as I say probably every episode. But look, that this is extreme difficulty, and that isn't that isn't a scary officer. That isn't eight hundred assault and defence isn't a scary officer. We've got no synergy here at all. But because we're using superior officers in defensive terrain. We can hold off that army forever. This is a mess, but it will look hopefully a bit more organised by the time I am at Googling. And I'll explain the plan of action then. Here he comes. Are they both reckless? No, only, only the one is. Not perfectly organised. There we go, Zhu Jun has died as well. What a shame Zhu Huang is left without his older brothers. But you can find him if the game allows me to new younger brothers, arguably better, better officers. I hope you've enjoyed me seeing Zhu Huang and uh, not Zhu Huang, Zhu Jun and Wu Ji. It's been fun using them as their officers you rarely get to see, and it's a shame they die early, but uh, that is that is what it is. I've been playing Nobunaga's Ambition Awakening recently and the amount of officers in that game and how quickly they drop like flies due to the passage of time and that is quite something else. And it's a mountain terrain but you can move around, there you go, he's doing nothing at all. He is now confused. I... He is now extremely confused. There are three soldiers left in that army, presumably one of them is the officer himself. And we can just, just sort of pivot over. Uh, maybe move back a little bit just in case. Little arrow boy decides to move a little bit closer towards us. Yeah. We should be able to. He has got mountain warlords, but he is cut deep into the mountains. Yeah, he's... I... I don't really know what he's doing, to be honest. So I'm just going to... It's only 3,000 troops, I'm just going to tell everyone to attack him. And these three can retreat after they're done. Wei Yang can't, of course, because he's ambitious. Pitting, and we are nearly in position once again. We outnumber the AI, so we'll just be very, very careful to set up in a way that is um, appropriate. It's going to take quite a while. Let's die, Chan. So you're going there, Dio Chan. can just have the ministrants sort of sit in the back somewhat in range of everybody and Jiang Ren is going to be the officer that's going to take Dan Dang Chu for me as he is a snake formation 
Monkey War was. I, where is he going? <laughs> I don't really know what else to say, just where is he going? And where Yang gets a finishing goal. Was he heading to Chang'an? He wasn't going for Anyang. I, I don't know where he was trying to attack. Chang'an has plenty of troops in it, it just seemed like his AI broke. And he decided to go wherever it was he was going to go. Okay, and up here. Okay, we are all back in position, so we need to get our camp re-established. Which we will do now. Just move everyone a little bit closer. Now, if I wanted to play this carefully, what I would do, now that I outnumber the AI, I would just surround the city and walk in and take it. But we're playing as Lubu, and I want to show off the potential of this new tactic I've got. So, we are, I am afraid, going to try and take the city via brute force once again. Their lives are casualties I am willing to sustain so we are going for it once again i think it's quite fitting for playing as lubu and our officers are just very very nearly in position by the time we start moving over to the mountains everyone will have caught up it's very, very frustrating playing around here, but it's what you have to do. And Zhang Ren, he'll just, he's just there to provide a defensive path. And I want to show you, Joe Yu, if he decides to deploy, that uh, he cannot simply just come out and set us all on fire. We're going to take that city regardless. Okay, we've got something. Oh, look at this, look at this. Okay, this is a big army. No Joe Yu. Ah, oh, what a tease. No Joe Yu. Yan Yan is the best officer they have here. And how much damage am I taking? Oh, oh, look at that. A Sura formation. Bam. Some of their weaker units completely wiped out already. Yan Yan's not going to move in, so I'm taking 15 there. We've got some incredibly powerful units here. Chang Liao taking 26. Who has heavens? Well, yeah, as soon as that activates, that could potentially wipe out, uh, well, all of these units. A duel! Ah, Cheng Pu. I am sorry, old man, but this is not a duel you were meant to win. There we are. Significantly weakened Cheng Pu there. Three, six, and one. We can, sit. we can literally sit here all day and Tian Shui in the interim is now a large city. Okay. Juji. Making an aggressive move, moving in. They have Lubu surrounded, but. Oh, it's been too long since we were set on fire. We can't go an episode without my troops getting burned alive. Gaoshun now enters the fray. Uh, statistically the best formation. Oh, look at that. 5,000, 4,000, 5,000. Bam. The whole left flank of this army gone completely. So, so, I can speed this up now. It's only Yan Yan taking the brunt of Gaoshun's wrath. Two more ticks of damage, and he will be gone too. Oh, he's confused. That's because the city has disorder. Am I right there? Yes, I am. Okay. So, what I do here, I move everyone forward. I'm, of course, subject to them being able to do so. And it takes some time to do so, because Gaoshun's going to act as a bottleneck. When everyone moves forward, the city will undoubtedly fall. 
Gaussian stats are terribly weak there. What's going on? Is this because of the confusion? You're not wounded, are you? No. I mean, look. That's just the power of confusion, I suppose. 3,000 damage to the troops in the city. Oh, Diotran's in range. I miscalculated. And Gaoshun's up to 99 leadership. <laughs> Only a thousand. No, Wang Yi can move forward, so can Zhang Ren. Soak up some of the damage. Anything? Oh. oh well. She might need a life extending item soon. Got 2000 damage there. Shield wall for some recovery. Brilliant, brilliant. And one more turn. And that's. As you can see, we no longer need any siege weapons. What I might need is some reinforcing troops. Have I got any spares? I can afford sending 20,000 south for maybe a bit of food. I have 100 days. That's, we'll, we will do okay. And subsequently, Young An is ours. And we are finally in control of the Shu region entirely. Uh, there you go. Go join Sun Jian or Sun Tzu. He needs all the help he can get, as we have broken, well, broken through his front line, and now we are looking at his very soft underbelly. I mean, if we have a look at the number of troops he has, as soon as the change of the turn is finished, two hundred fifty thousand. So he is nearly as strong as we are, strong but slightly stronger than Cao Cao substantially stronger than Yuan Chu and Liu Bei combined, but his troops are all located on 30,000 in the south there, 70,000 in Ling Ling, Sun Tzu, what are you doing? Jersey is not the enemy. <sighs> Tell you what, am I really going to do this? Ah, I'm going to do it. This is how you, this is how, with the right DLC, you need to do it, you can manually make, ah, I'll give it 24. I know that feels very, very lame, but I can't have Sun Tzu keeping 70,000 of his troops in Ling Ling when I'm over here in uh, Yong'an. So we broke we've broken through anyway so that's a, that's an important stepping stone because we can see we've got a fair amount of uh, extra doctrine exp to come our way to but what i need to do here is mediate a new set of sworn brothers for zhu huang i know i could involve ma chao but he's got his own siblings and his own army there so sima yi and fa cheng or Wei Yan. Oh, Sima Yi and Fa Cheng. Sima Yi. Oh, do I want to use Wei Yan? Do I want to use Yu Huang? Do I want to use these three and then Fa Cheng just in the back? Decisions, decisions. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm going to go for Wei Yan. And it works. There we are, it's like nothing had happened. Zhu Huang's sworn siblings, Wei Yan see me this whole time. And I know those watching are probably thinking making Wei Yan a sworn sibling of Sima Yi is absolutely disgusting, but there is no explanation or excuse, that's what we've done. So I am going to leave things here because of this um, <sighs> tactical error. I am going to allow Sun Tzu a few more months in order to transport his troops around and maybe we will get a, another battle at Jianling. So this is another short episode but um, a lot has happened in a very brief amount of time 
we've broken through Yong'an, I've shown off the Asura formation tactic, and most importantly, um, we've got a new generation of Sworn Siblings. So, very sh small episode, uh, I know it's a bit different from what I usually do, but these bite-side episodes are easier to record, and in the next episode I can hopefully get a climatic battle against Sansa, after which we can swarm through his provinces. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, minor episode, and I will see you in the next one.